Hi, everyone. In this uh, recording, I want to go over uh, the marginal functions in economics, marginal analysis. Uh, then we're going to talk about elasticity of demand and then see how we can use uh, mathematics or calculus to uh, do the calculations and how we can relate calculus to elasticity of demand and marginal analysis. So first, I put a little introduction for you here. What is marginal analysis? The definition is the study of rate of change. Very important. Remember that rate of change of economics quantities. Equan economics quantities can be the demand, can be the price, and the or the price function, the demand function. So we'll see how they're related to each other. So it says an economics is not merely concerned with the value of an economic gross domestic product. We call that GDP at a given time, but equally concerned with the rate at which it's growing. And again, here, remember the rate because uh, the rate in derivative we learn in the uh, calculus we learned is the derivative. So it's growing or declining. Same way a manufacturer is not interested in the total cost corresponding to a certain level of production of a commodity, but also in the rate of change of the total cost with respect to the level of production. Now, let me just give you some explanation about GDP. What is GDP is we won't use this formula, but it's not bad to know. Is the private consumption plus the gross investment plus the government investment and plus exports minus import. Each country has a GDP and if the GDP is higher, that means the, uh, the country is doing well economically. However, it's very important to know at what rate that GDP is growing or declining. So I put some examples of uh, the GDP here. We have top 15 countries by GDP in 2020. So we have United States, the GDP is $19.48 trillion. That's pretty high. And it's the highest in the entire world. The rate of growing, the growth rate is 2.27%. So China has 12.23 trillion, which is much less than 19.48 trillion. However, uh, the rate of growth for China is 6.9%, which is the highest in the entire world. So the rate is very important. Now, to talk about marginal analysis, how do we calculate? So let's see what that is. So, well, we learned about the cost function, the revenue function, and the profit function. Here, the government, in an example, the cost function is given. So 8,000 plus 200x minus 0.2x squared, and that's the cost if the company produces anywhere from zero to 400 items. Part A says find the cost of manufacturing of 21st item. So if you find that, so part A, you can just calculate that cost of that. Part B, find the rate of change of the total cost function with respect to X when X six 200 uh, 50. Now, when you want to change, uh, find the rate, basically we want to know what happens if we go from the either, what happens to the cost if we go from item 250 to 251. And uh, let me just erase this, that's not. So part A, for this one, all you have to do is to calculate that and part b this is more part b you just take the difference 
So the cost of going from the item 250 to 251 is 99.8 cents. So now if we take the derivative of this function and we calculate C prime of 250, we get 100, which is very close to that number. And uh, let me erase this too. What's going on here? If I write why these numbers are so close, because you put, you put C of 251 minus C of 250 divided by the difference. The difference is one. And if I change the notation, you get C of 250 plus one minus C of 250 over one. And if you call one, because which is the difference H, we get this formula. And remember this formula, the definition of the derivative or it's C prime of 250. So whenever you hear marginal cost or marginal uh, revenue or marginal profit, the way you calculate that is just take the derivative and you can plug in the number. So another definition here, the actual cost incurred in producing and additional unit of a certain commodity given that the plant is already at a certain level of operation is called the marginal cost so one more time the plant is already in operation here they're already making 250 units and we want to know the cost from 250 to two, uh, 250 to 250 first item so that's the marginal. But the best way to remember that, just take the derivative. If you hear marginal cost function, that means the derivative of the cost function. Here I'll use another example and I calculated C prime at different level of productions. So this is the cost function. You can take the derivative and you get that. C prime of 200 is 20, that means going from item 200 to 201, it costs $20. Once you go to 300, it's 19, it's less than 20. Once you do this 400, it's 24. So this keeps, this rate is not constant, is changing as you produce or the company produces more item, sees uh, more items. C prime of 600 is 52, which is much higher than all these three. So this is a rate or just C prime of X, that's the marginal cost and that's what we are interested in. And as you can see, because it's not the same. So so conclusion, of a marginal analysis, if you hear uh, finding marginal cost, marginal uh, revenue, or marginal profit, the fastest way to find that, just take the derivative and you can plug in the number and uh, that's gonna give you the answer. Let's talk about the elasticity of demand. So definition, when a change in one variable causes a response in another variable that's called elasticity. So what is elasticity? Elasticity is the measure of the size of the response. Now one variable to another, the variables can be the demand and the price. When you change the price, the demand can go up or can go down. And of course, this is gonna affect the revenue uh, of the company. Now let's see how that works. Elasticity measures how sensitive the value of one variable is to the value of another. Another. So these are kind of rate of change. But in this case, we're gonna talk about mostly the demand and the price. If a percent change in the input variable, that could be the price, causes relatively lar large change in the output variable, that could be the demand. 
the relationship between variables is called elastic. So a large change, then you say it's elastic. Same thing, if a percent change in the input variable causes relatively small change in the output variable, then the relation between them or between the variables is called inelastic. So just remember elastic and inelastic. Large change is elastic and small change is an inelastic. Let's see how we can use that. So now there's another definition, elasticity of demand, let the price P and the demand X for a product to be related by a price demand equation. So price demand equation, again, this, uh, this is the number of items. You can say X equals to F of P. The elasticity of demand at price P is denoted EP, or in our book, we can just, you can just see this times, it's the same thing. What is that? Is a negative relative rate of change of demand over relative rate of change of price. Now rate of change, we can say delta Q over Q for the numerator and delta P over P, which is the price. And Q is can also be you know, the demand. So here X equals to F of P, and you can also call this Q different books. They use different notation. So please be careful. These are exactly the same thing. So now if you go by the derivative, we can put dq over q over dp over p, and it's negative because the demand is decreasing. Now if we simplify this, we get negative p over q times dq over dp. What is dq over dp? It's just the derivative of this function. So or it's F prime of P. The price and demand are related by, well, I put Q here for you also. Please be careful with Q and X because sometimes they're, uh, they are the same thing. And I put F prime of P is just DQ over DP, different way of writing the derivatives. The formula for elasticity of demand E of P or just E in our book is negative p times f prime of p divided by p and if i change it to the notation is just f prime of p is dq over dp and uh, this is p over q p over f of p f of p is the same thing as q so any of those formulas using it is the same thing you can pick whichever one is easy for you and use it and they take absolute value because they want to get rid of that negative sign it's easier to read it without the negative sign now what happens we have you when you calculate e of p that means that if that number is between zero and one then you say the demand is inelastic what happens in this case the demand is not sensitive to change in price. So that's a little change. The, that is percent change in price produces smaller percent change in demand, just like here. So then that's why you say it's an elastic. But we wanna know what happens to the revenue. That means a price increase will increase the revenue. So whenever E of P is between zero and one, it's better for the company to increase the price because that's going to increase the revenue. If we calculate E of P, and again, or just E, and that number is greater than one, then the change is large. So you say the demand is elastic demand is sensitive to changes in price that is a percent change in price produces a larger change in demand in this case it's not good to raise the price because a price increase will decrease the 
revenue. So it's very fast way of uh, finding out for a company if they have to increase the price or they have to leave it the same or they decrease it. So that's that answer is given by uh, the formula E of P. E of P between zero and one, increase the price. E of P greater than one, then don't touch or decrease the price. What happens when it's equal to one, then you say the demand is unit, unit means one. A percent change in the price produces the same percent change in the demand. And that's when the revenue is maximum. So if you want to find the price where the revenue is maximum, you can just find E of P put it equal to one and solve for P and that's going to give you the answer. And I put some summary of formulas here. We learned about the cost function. The cost function is fixed cost plus variable price. Example of that is going to be C of X is 270 plus 0.15 X. This is just an example I wrote. Then the price demand P of X, the price is not always constant. So you can have a function of the price. And that's what, again, it's another example. 30 minus 0.5 X. So I just simply pick an example. The price demand P is usually given by some uh, function. So the price demand function is a linear function, negative AX plus B. So, and uh, however, sometimes you have to create a P of X from <clears throat> price information. So sometimes you're going to be given the information and you have to find the equation of the price function. How do you do that? For example, P of X can be calculated using point slope formula, point slope equation. For example, price is 14 for 200 units for a company and it will decrease uh, to 12. So if the unit sold it 300. Now, this is X number of items. So for 200, it's 14 and for 300 is 12. We notice this line goes down, so it has a negative slope. If we plot point, take the points, 200 is 14, 300 is 12. So you can find the slope of that line and by using the slope formula. So that's gonna be 12 minus 14 divided by 300 minus 200. So delta Y over delta X here is gonna be delta price divided by delta unit or the difference in price divided by the difference in number of units and you get negative 0.02. So the slope is negative. Then you can find, use point slope formula and find Y. But what is Y here? Y is the same thing as P of X. Now, what is revenue? We learned revenue is X times the price. For example, if I sell five items at $2 each, two times five is $10. So we learned that the price is not constant. So revenue is X number of items times the price. In this case is the price function. And for example, here, if I want to find the revenue, I can just take the example I put, it's X times 300.5 X and we get that number. Profit we learned is revenue minus the cost. Now the break even point, we have break even point when the revenue equals to the cost. So, or if we graph these two functions, this is the revenue function. And if we have the cost function, which is a linear function, they do cross each other at two points. So this is the break even form. If the revenue function is not a linear function, so you can have 
break even point at two different points or two different uh, items. So average cost is C with a line on the top. This is C bar is C of X over X. These are just little formulas. Good to know is the cost per unit item. Average price is P of X over X is the price per unit item. Marginal revenue we learned, take the derivative. Marginal cost, take the derivative. And marginal profit, take the derivative. So this is just a repeat. The demand function for price is given by X equals to F of E, and don't forget this can be Q also. If E of P or elasticity of demand is one, that's called unit elasticity. We learned that just, we talked about it. This is a repeat, but it's okay. It's good just do a couple of times. Demand change equals to price change. E of P is greater than one. This is elastic, large demand change with price. If you change the price, then the demand is going to change. So E of P less than one, that's inelastic. So please remember all those. Demand not sensitive to price change. If you change the price, then the demand will not change. So in this case, it's good to increase the price. Note, if the price increases by 1%, the demand will decrease by E percent. So, now, another note here, one more time, X equals to F of P equals to Q. Q stands for quantity and X, same thing, the number of items made or sold. So a company sells X or Q items per year at a price of P per item. The demand function for the item is given. So we have the demand function so it's given by that so this is the pro price so same thing i put it here find the elasticity of demand when the price is 70 dollars now if you want to do that you need to isolate x actually this is the price function and if you isolate x x becomes the demand function so what they are they're inverse of each other so we are given the price function. We want to solve for x, isolate x in this equation. And if you isolate x, you get x to be 15,000 minus 50p. And we also call that q. So this is the demand function. You can calculate the derivative of that is negative 50. We need to find Q when P is 70. So that's just F of 70. And uh, you get 11,500. The elasticity of demand is F times F prime of P divided by F of P or P times P over Q times DQ over DP. The absolute value, you can put the negative sign, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be positive. The absolute value is going to make it positive anyway. So P was 70. Right here, the price over F of P, we found that is 11,500 times negative 50, which is DQ over D pure F prime of P. So you get 0 0.3. This number is between zero and one. So E is less than one. So demand is inelastic. Increasing the price by 1% would increase, you know, would only cause an increase of 0.3% drop in demand. Increasing the price would lead to an increase in revenue. The company should increase its price. One more time, if this number is between zero and one, increasing the price will increase the revenue. Now, a company finds the demand Q equals to F of P in thousands 
for their items q equals to f of p is given here q is given so you don't have to do anything the demand function is given is 400 minus p squared at price of p dollars find the elasticity of demand when the price is five dollars and when the price is fifteen dollars and it's interesting to find those and compare them then find the price that will maximize the revenue so first step find f prime of x or dq over dp that's negative 2p use the formula for elasticity of demand is p over q plus dq over dp or you can use the other one so if you substitute this p minus 400 we're just using the functions 400 minus p squared and times negative 2p that over q and times the derivative which is right here so you get absolute value of negative 2p squared over 400 minus p squared once you have this to substitute e of 5 is 0.133 less than 1 or between 0 and 1 so it's inelastic e of 15 2.571 it's greater than 1 it's elastic in this case it's good it's good to increase the price in this case it's not good to increase the price so and you can read a one percent increase in price would decrease the demand by 0.133 percent revenue could be raised by increasing the price here one percent increase in price would decrease the demand by 2.571 percent revenue could be raised by decreasing the price so these are it's good information to know maximize so to maximize we know that happens when the elasticity of demand equals to one so what you can do you have this equation we found it take it and put it equal to one and solve for p so if you do that you get square root of 400 over 3 which is 11.55 dollars will maximize the revenue so now this is another way of uh, finding just to go over this fast we know the demand function is that so if i want to find the price function i can isolate p and you get square root of 400 minus x the revenue we learned it was x so if i write it here r of x is x times p of x so now in this case it's going to be x times square root of 400 minus x and if you want to maximize the revenue again another way of doing it you can take the derivative and put it equal to zero i did find the derivative here so you can use the product rule so it's the derivative of the first one times the second function plus the derivative of the second function which is that times the first function and if you simplify that it needs some algebra you get that you don't need to do this part because it's already done that but i just want you to see if you do that and put it equal to zero you get exactly the same answer and we see that it's much faster by using the elasticity of demand then taking the two finding the revenue function taking the derivative and put it equal to zero so there is the proof of the uh, elasticity of demand the proof and the analysis i'm not going to go over this over this so you don't need to know the proof but i will upload this note it's good to take a look at it and see how we can relate the, from revenue to elasticity of demand. So yeah, I think that's good for this recording. Please watch it a couple of times or three times and you should be ready to do the homework. Thank you and have a great day, everyone.